Las Vegas, mid-1980s. The strip sparkled like a diamond, neon lights screaming, slot machines singing, and the scent of money, sweat, perfume, fear, thick in the air. Casinos, temples of chance, where billions changed hands every night, unaware that a group of students from MIT was about to tilt the odds. They weren't armed, they didn't have masks, and they weren't planning a dramatic heist. Their weapon was math, pure, cold calculation. They counted cards, not a casual trick, an art, a science, a system so precise it could read the rhythm of the dealer's shuffle, the subtle tilt of a shoe, the quiet language of chance. Who were these students? And how could they bend the rules of the house? Welcome to the Mr. Pulte Files. Las Vegas casinos were temples of precision. Every shuffle recorded, every chip tracked, every table observed. The house didn't just play cards. It controlled chaos with algorithms of human behavior. Security cameras like hawks, pit bosses with eyes sharper than eagles. Trust was their currency, and it was supposed to be bulletproof. But here's the twist. Even the most meticulous systems have blind spots, and blind spots are playgrounds for those who understand the rules better than the rule makers. The MIT Blackjack team didn't walk in like tourists. They walked in armed with spreadsheets, calculators, and rehearsed signals. They studied dealer habits, card sequences, table tempos. They identified patterns invisible to the naked eye, the subtle tells, the shuffle rhythm, the way a dealer's fingers danced over a deck. They relied on teamwork, a silent network of lookouts, counters, and signaling experts. One person watching the cards, another signaling the bet, a third counting in their head like a human computer. Every move synchronized, every dollar calculated. They were a casino inside the casino, invisible yet omnipresent. The MIT blackjack team didn't need explosives, hacking, or chaos. Their target was simple, human error. The dealers, pit bosses, um, and even the blinking cameras were predictable. People, after all, are machines with soft spots, routine, habits, and blind confidence. Weeks of observation turned into a blueprint. Every shuffle, every cut, every casual glance was recorded, noted, memorized. A dealer always glanced at the discard tray. The table always followed the same betting rhythm. Even the house cameras, intended to watch them, were predictable. They didn't strike in a single night. They attacked slowly, invisibly, like a shadow. Small bets first, just enough to test the system, to learn the reactions, to find the threshold. Observers in the team signaled discreetly. One flick of a hand, a tap on a coin, a glance across the table. And that's how every MIT mind could tell. The table was hot. And the casinos? They were blind. They trusted the shuffle, the security, the ritual. But ritual breeds predictability. And predictability is a loophole. But the question remained. How exactly did they turn cards into millions? In blackjack... Every card that leaves the shoe shifts the math. Low cards, two through six, feed the house. High cards, 10 through ace, feed the player. That imbalance is the signal, the language of advantage. The team tracked it with precision. One counter at the table maintaining a running total, another translating that total into the true count, dividing by the decks still in play. When the count rose, so did the odds. That was the trigger. A signal moved across the floor, subtle, invisible, rehearsed, a touch of a chip, a glance, a phrase that meant, the deck is hot. Then the big player approached, calm, detached. To the casino, he looked like another tourist chasing luck, but every chip he placed was calculated. He bet only when the math turned in his favor. The system wasn't magic, it was data. Dealers followed patterns, shuffles weren't perfect. Surveillance saw movements, not motives. The team lived in that blind spot. Every hand, every shuffle, every pause in the dealer's rhythm was a line of code they'd already read. Katine believed in math, and for a while, math won.
Every few nights, the strip glittered obliviously as the MIT team played their hands. The tables were their stage, the chips their script. Each shuffle, each bet, each flip of a card became part of a calculated performance. The big moves weren't impulsive, they were ritual. Like clockwork, they executed strategies perfected over months of observation. When the TC greater than or equal to plus two, the spotter gave the signal. The big player sat like any tourist, and bets rose only as much as the math allowed. To the pit, the table looked normal. The metrics said otherwise, three to six hands with positive edge, proportional bet ramp, immediate drop to minimum the moment the count cooled. The decisive hand wasn't epic, it was applied statistics. The casino thought it ran the scene. In practice, every chip was a receipt. Not luck, not cinema. It was data. There was elegance in the theft. No alarms, no chaos, just pure, cold advantage. The kind of theft that leaves no fingerprints, only questions. By the time the final chips were counted, the casinos were in shock. Numbers didn't lie, but neither did panic. Pit bosses whispered behind glass, security cameras replayed hours of seemingly mundane hands, and managers ran calculations that made no sense. Millions had shifted from their tables to pockets they couldn't trace. The MIT blackjack team didn't flee in sirens or masks. They left quietly, like ghosts dissolving in meal and smoke. No alarms, no police chase, just empty chairs, stacks of chips, and the lingering question, how did this happen? Casinos scrambled to adjust. Dealers were retrained, pit monitoring intensified, cameras repositioned, but trust, once fractured, is hard to repair. The machines, the surveillance, the rules, they were perfect on paper. But on paper, math can't account for a team that thinks faster, counts better, and moves like shadows. So, who were they? Brilliant students, mathematicians, engineers. How did they win? Coordination, discipline, and flawless card counting. Could the casinos stop them? Not in time. Systems are strong, but humans are predictable. Rules are enforceable, habits are exploitable. And in the end, the illusion of invincibility is just that, an illusion. If you made it this far, congratulations. You've been inside the ghost story that turned the strip upside down. Hit like, subscribe, and share this with that friend who still thinks the house always wins. I'm Mr. Pulte. See you in Vegas. And if you want another story where the house blinked, check out the Bybit crypto heist, where code and nerve did what luck never could. 